I welcome everybody who is interested in science and today I will talk about the papers that investigated how red's brain regulate fear and how neuroscientists can manipulate these fear responses. At the end I will briefly outline similar results for humans, so stay tuned and you will know all the details. The paper was published by two researchers from Seoul University in Korea and University of Washington in Seattle, the US. Now let's check the main outcome of this paper. In natural environment, foragers, for instance mice and rats, constantly face the risk of encountering predators. And fear is a defensive mechanism evolved to protect animals from danger by balancing the animal needs for primary resources with the risk of predation. Amygdala is a brain region implicated in mediating fear responses. However, the functions of fear and amygdala in foraging behavioral are not well characterized because of these technical difficulties in quantifying prey-predator interaction. I mean, there are ways to induce fear on rats by filling order or, for instance, by putting a cat uh, nearby, but for sure, such setups will not mimic the interaction of a rat with a real predator. The present study investigated the rat's foraging behavioral when confronted with a predator-like Lego program to search toward the animal seeking food. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Lego is sometimes used in the real science as well. In this manner, scientists could control an ongoing prey-predator interaction. Uh, well, you may ask me now, but why would an animal be afraid of this robot? I mean, it looks quite fancy, isn't it? And I'm not afraid of it. The idea is that rats and mice are afraid of the big objects that swiftly move towards them. Uh, it's a part of their um, survival instinct. I mean, it's kind of logical as well to be concerned about some big random stuff that uh, swiftly moves towards you. Humans are often afraid too. Now let's take a look on the video featuring the experiment. Here is a door from which the animal enters. Here is a foot pellet. And here researchers put the featured robot. And as we discussed, the robot would search toward the animal approaching food. As you can see, the animal failed to get the food. And uh, then after some time, the animal tries again, the same outcome. And this happens a couple of times, with the breaks becoming longer and eventually the experiment is stopped. As we have seen, the animal couldn't overcome the fear against the Lego robot and couldn't get the food. However, when the pellet was positioned closer to the entrance door, at some point the rats could overcome their fear and get the pellet. Now let's check how the animal behavioral changed after the scientist inactivated amygdala. Remember, this is the brain region responsible for mediating fear and one of the ways to reversibly inactivate it is to infuse in the amygdala the drug that suppresses the neural activity. In this case, it was GABA-A agonist Muskimol. Complete absence of the fear. Moreover, when occasionally in one of the trial food pellet got stuck in the jaws of the robot, the animal was not giving up and was retrieving the food directly from the jaws. As I've said, no fear at all. Importantly, when the animals were tested on the next day without the drug infusion in the amygdala, they demonstrated the same fear behavior as we have seen in the first video. Interestingly, scientists addressed an opposite question as well. What will happen if we increase the activity of amygdala neurons, for instance, by infusing GABA-A receptor antagonist? Can you guess what was observed? Animals uh, became more anxious and practically this was measured by decreased distance at which the animals became not afraid of the Lego robot. Thus, by manipulating with the activity of one specific brain region, scientists could take a control over the fear response. The next question comes, what about humans? <laughs> you know, for me it sounds like a horror scene from Shutter Island. Do you know how pain enters the body, Marshall? Do you? Depends on where you hurt. No. It has nothing to do with the flesh. The brain controls pain. The brain controls fear, empathy, sleep, hunger, anger, everything. What if you could control it? The brain? Recreate a man so he doesn't feel pain or love or, or, or sympathy. A man who can't be interrogated because he has no memories to confess. Likely, these sorts of experiments on humans are not permitted, at least officially. However, there are still ways to get human-based data. 
How? For example, when a patient needs to undergo a surgery to combat with a certain disorder. This often happens in case of an epilepsy. In this case, neurosurgeons have to put the electrodes in the brain, and during the post surgical evaluation, there is a room for some scientific experiments, of course, only after a patient's agreement. For instance, in 2007, researchers from Université de Provence from France electrically stimulated the amygdala and could indeed induce negative emotions and fear that were either verbally reported by a participant or measured by physiological markers such as skin conductance. Again, you electrically stimulate amygdala, the brain region mediating fear, and you get a few response from a human participant. I wonder if we'll ever go too far. With what? With this, with all of this. No such thing. You were right, Philby. We did go too far. Even though the discussed papers revealed quite interesting facts about the fear regulation, these are now more or less textbook knowledge, and science moved further. Nowadays, there are no techniques such as optogenetics allowing the scientists to switch on and off the activity of a specific brain region in real time with a high temporal precision. Some of these techniques are now gradually applied to humans. Therefore, in the nearest futures, we may experience a new era in medicine and biotechnology. Hope it will be used for good. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up and do not hesitate to share your ideas, thoughts or just emotions about the discussed topic or the channel in general in the comment section below. Your feedback does matter and greatly helps to improve the content. Of course, if you want to check the new videos, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, allowing all notifications. In this way, you will be notified about the new and cool scientific papers. And I hope to see you soon.